In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a 2D light inside your 2D game in Unity, which means that we're going to be able to set up a light fairly easily inside our 2D games because it used to be a little bit different back in the past. Like it had to be like 3D lighting inside a 2D game and look a little bit weird. Uh, but Unity do actually have support for 2D lighting, which looks very awesome. Uh, so the first thing you're going to be doing in order to set this up is very important that you go inside new projects and whenever you set up a new 2D project, make sure that you have the one called 2D URP, which stands for Universal Render Pipeline. Now, if you're already building a 2D game and you didn't pick the URP version when you created the templates back when you started the project out, um, I will show you how to upgrade that project to a URP version. So we'll do that to begin with here, just so everyone is on board. And then I will show you how to actually create the lighting inside your scene. So if you already created a URP version, just skip ahead. I will have timestamps below, so you can just do that fairly easily. But for now, let's actually go ahead and create a 2D version. I'm just gonna create a random one called my project one and just set it up so I can show you. So inside your project, which should not be a URP template, you're just gonna go ahead and go to window, go to package manager, make sure you actually have it set up down here. Probably you do already have it since you are inside an existing project. Instead of choosing packages in project, we're actually gonna go inside the Unity registry and we're just gonna go ahead and search for universal pipeline or just scroll down until you find it. So it should be just around here, universal RP. So once you found it, you're just gonna go ahead and install it. So we have it inside our project and then we need to actually set it up afterwards. Now, once you open up Unity again, you shouldn't get any errors. If you do still have an error message, make sure you actually install the latest version of Unity and then open your project using that. So once you have it open, we're gonna go and go back inside our project because now we actually need to create a universal render pipeline asset. So we're gonna go ahead and right click inside our assets folder, go to create. Then we're gonna go down to rendering and then we're going to create a URP asset with 2D renderer. So we're just gonna go ahead and click it and then you can just go ahead and give it some kind of name. I'm just gonna leave mine at default. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click enter. And then you can see we now have some assets in here. Next thing, we're going to actually add the asset inside our settings. So we're gonna go up to edit. Then we're gonna go down to project settings. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dock it up here. Then I'm going to go to graphics. And inside graphics, you can see right now we have none set to our renderer pipeline asset. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that we have that selected. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go in and select my renderer pipeline. Say I want to continue. And now we actually have it selected inside our scriptable render pipeline settings. So now after doing this, you may notice something inside your already existing project, which is that all the different shaders are gonna look really weird. They're gonna be pink and they're not really gonna be matching. Uh, so what you want to make sure you do is that you actually apply this new renderer to all the different assets you have inside your game already. Next, you're going to go up to edit, then you're gonna go down to rendering, materials, and in here you should actually have two options. I only have one option here because I don't actually have a major project open in front of me. Before we do the next step though, I should warn you that once you do this next step, you can't revert it back again. So you probably should do a backup of your project just in case something goes wrong. Uh, but with that, let's actually go ahead and go up to edit, then go down to rendering, go to materials, and in here you should actually have two options. I only have one option here because I don't actually have a entire project with many different things inside my scene. Uh, but basically you should actually be able to choose one that says upgrade project materials to URP materials. So not just the one that says convert selected build-in materials. It should I, if I remember correctly, be the one below this one. Once you pick that, it is going to convert your entire project and then it should automatically fix all the little pink assets you have inside your scene. So with that, you're now ready to actually get started on creating 2D lighting. Now, I went ahead and closed down the template that I just opened up to show you how to convert things because I actually want to show the lighting inside an actual scene when you actually have something. Again, don't get overwhelmed when you see that I have stuff inside my screen here. It's going to be the exact same process for you in order to create lighting. I just wanted something to actually show you that you are actually creating lighting and it has an effect on the different objects inside your scene. So with that, let's actually go ahead and talk about how to create the lighting. Now, as a default, when you start up a 2D URP template, you will actually have a global light inside your hierarchy. And this is actually in order to light up the entire scene inside your project. So if you don't have this one because you converted your 2D project to an URP project, you can actually go ahead and create a global light by going inside your hierarchy and right click, go down to light, and then say global light 2D, which is down here at the bottom here. And then you will have a global light 2D inside your scene. And as you can see, we have many different settings over here on the right side. You can actually tell it which layers you want to target. So if you want to target all the layers inside your game, 
including the player, the environment, everything inside your game, then you can go ahead and do that. You can also say how intense you want it to be. I actually toned mine down to 0.1 for my particular game here, just to show what I have here because it is a pretty dark game, so I didn't want a lot of lighting in here. Uh, but if you have a very bright game, then probably you will want to have a lot more lighting than I actually do have here. So as you can see, I have a very dark game. It's kind of like a dungeon from inside one of the darker Mario games. Just to point something out here, because I know some people may not know this, but if you are inside your scene view, not inside your game view, because then it's going to look like this, uh, but you can see my game view looks very different from my scene view. And that's because I actually disabled the lighting and the post effects that I have inside my scene. You can do that by going up inside your scene view at the top here. You can see when toggle on the scene lighting is used. So I can actually toggle this on. Then you can see, oh, all of a sudden the, the lighting I have set up currently is actually viewable inside my scene. I can also go up here, click on the drop down. Say I want to activate my post processing and then you can see, okay, so now it looks a little bit closer to uh, what we have inside this window here so we can actually see what is going on. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off my post processing again just so we have the lighting selected because that is what you're interested in, right? So with that said, let's actually go ahead and create a light source inside our scene. Now we do actually have four different types you can create. So if I were to actually right click inside my hierarchy, I can go down to lighting and I can actually choose either sprite light, spotlight, global light or freeform light. And do keep in mind that these are the 2D lights that we can use inside our game. So if you're inside a 2D game, these are the ones you want to be picking. Just ignore all the ones that are above here because they're not important right now. Um, so what you can do is you can actually go and pick any of these. I am going to start off with the spotlight and then I'm gonna show each of the lights one at a time. But essentially you can go and pick a light and then you can see it gets put inside the scene. And you can see we actually get this little visual element inside our scene that we can actually drag so we can change it inside the scene itself. Or if you're a little bit more technical, maybe you want to change it inside your inspector over here. So you can see you want to change the outer ring, which is the same ring I just pulled on. Uh, but you can also go ahead and change the inner radius if you want to do that, which is essentially the circle where the lights need to start falling off. So it becomes a little bit less bright around it. Um, so you can shape this after any kind of circle inside your game. Usually the spotlight here is actually used for, let's say, lamps inside a game because you can put this inside a lamp. Uh, but also because if I were to actually rotate my object here for a second, uh, I can actually go ahead and say I want the inner and outer spot angles to be changed. So I can actually say, oh, you know what? This is going to be a lamp that is on my ceiling and it's going to be pointing down. So we actually have this uh, light that is just pointing down in a triangle if I want to have that. So that could, for example, be used for lamps inside your game. There's probably many creative ways you can you can use this by using an angle instead. Uh, you can also go and change the intensity. So how strong do you want the light to be? You can also change, you know, what color should the light be? Do you want it to be a red light that is pointing in a direction? You know, you can actually change things here uh, just to get a different effect. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose a red one here just so we can see it. We can also target with layers wants to be affected by these lights. So right now it is set to default, which means that the default layer is the only one that is affected by the light. I can also go ahead and say, I want everything to be affected by the light. So I can do that. And then you can see, we can actually have both the foreground, the actual platforms and the player. If you actually were to stand in here, I can actually click my play and just move him in. Then he's also going to be affected. You can see he actually lights up there. Now we do also have some more settings down here, which is for example, blending modes. If you want this to be multiply mode or additive, which is going to give a different lighting effect. Usually we just stick to multiply if it's just a, a typical light effect you want to have inside your scene. So that is what you can do using the spotlight. So let's go ahead and talk about the next one, which is going to be freeform. Now freeform is a little bit different because you can actually shape this after whatever sprite you may have inside your scene. So let's say I, for example, have slime at the bottom here that I want to light up. What I can do is I can take this freeform light and I can actually go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and, and move it down to my slime here. Because when the player gets down to the slime, I want the slime to glow the surrounding area to really be ominous, you know, so it looks really dangerous. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and say I want to increase the size. So I can say edit shape. Then I can just go ahead and drag to where I want this to be. We can also do this just by, you know, changing the size of it if you wanted to do that. But typically we just kind of like change the... Uh, the shape here. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And then I want the glow to be the same color as my slime. So I'm just going to go and pick the slime here like so. And it's just going to be changed on how much I want it to fall off. So right now you can actually see it's falling off here. First of all, I want to make sure it's actually affecting everything. Then I can change, for example, you know, how, how far should the glow be? So right now it's glowing to, to around here. 
Uh, I can also change the intensity. Like right now it's giving off kind of like a reddish glow, but that's because green plus purple, I guess I picked here, is going to become red. So that's what we're getting in color here. Uh, but you can actually see the blue ones is actually getting the, the green glow. You can also change the falloff strength. So how far towards the edge of the falloff do we want the glow to, to actually get to? Uh, so we can get something like this. So as you can see, we can start changing how we want this to look like inside our scene. If we want to create a more custom shape for our scene. Now we do also have something else called a sprite mode, which is going to be a little bit different because if we were to pick this one, uh, let's actually go ahead and move this up back to where we have our player. If I were to pick this one, you can actually create a light that is based on a sprite shape. So if I were to actually go down and say right now it has no sprite selected, so I can go in and select any kind of sprite inside my, my project here. I'm just gonna go ahead and create one for my player. So let's say I'm going to pick my player here. Now, if I were to actually go down so we can see the, the actual light on something, you can see that right now I have a light that is based on my player that kind of gives off this kind of like ghost effect. So I can actually change the, again the intensity, how much light do I want to bounce off, what kind of color should it be? I'm just gonna pick white here. Uh, we can also choose which layers to affect, just like with the other lights that we have inside our project. So with this, you can pick and create a light based off a sprite shape, if that's something you wanna do. And then the last thing, of course, is going to be that you can actually pick the global one, which is just going to be a global light that affects the entire scene. So you can light up everything inside your scene if you wanna do that. Um, you know, just like the global light that we have up here. So we can actually just delete this one because we have one already. So if I pick the global light, you can see, oh, we can change the light of the entire scene. So that's basically what we're doing there with a global light. Putting those things together, uh, just to test things out, I could actually select my object here and nest a light source to it. So I can actually say I want to create a light. Now you can't actually see this because it's behind my, my face, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a Spotlight 2D. So we have it actually on this object here. I'm going to increase my inner just so it, it lights up this object. And I'm going to make sure that the outer glow is a little bit taller or going out a little bit further in radius. And I can go ahead and just increase the intensity of my light source just so we have it actually, you know, hitting objects around it. So something along the lines of this. So now if I would actually play my game, you can see we now have a light source inside my game, which is lighting up this box here and actually casting a, a glow on the surrounding area. So we can create lights for our scene. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was uh, a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, but essentially this is how you can create 2D light inside a 2D game with the universal render pipeline that has been included into Unity a couple of, a couple of versions ago. So with that, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Thank you.